you very much for that. Um, once again, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody that has taken the time to join us this evening um, on this panel discussion on the retail and services business and how one can take their businesses online. Um, just to go through uh, some house rules, uh, if you just can look at the slide that I'm going to be uh, taking you guys through. Um, do excuse my tardiness. This is actually quite new to me. I'm also just learning. Um, so here are the house rules on the screen. So number one, if we can all have um, our videos off. Um, and two, keep your, Microsoft, your microphones on mute. Um, this allows us very little disturbance uh, whenever somebody else is, is speaking as well as anything that might be happening in the background, of course. Um, if you do want to ask any questions, there's a tab right at the bottom that says Q&A. So you can just ask your questions there. Um, and then you can just feel free to share your thoughts and comments on the social media uh, platforms. Um, that is Bwasa Gauteng, and you can use the hashtag Business Women Persevere. That's hashtag Business Women Persevere. So for anyone else that has any other questions um, for how one could be a part of the association, the email is on screen. All right, so just as for you know just for us to kick start i'm just going to share a little bit about um you know a survey that i was just um having a look at we all know about the COVID 19 uh, pandemic and how it has you know somewhat impacted um a lot of smes not just smes but also big businesses as well um and as some of us may know the national development plan uh, of south africa envisions that by 2020 nine out of ten new jobs uh, will be generated specifically by micro, small, and medium enterprises. Now, this brief survey that I'm just going to share with you um, was conducted by Papama, uh, Papama Masedi, um, and they had surveyed 220, 233 entrepreneurs from six different provinces here in the country um, across 17 sectors. And one of the findings that they had was that um, um, out of the out of those 233 um, SMEs that they had surveyed, six of them um, they employ an average six people. Um, each 85% of them um, do not receive any government grants. 95% of them uh, mention that they cannot aff afford to pay uh, employees as a result of the pandemic. 50% uh, said um, that they do not think that their businesses will survive. Um, past this year, and 93% of those 233 entrepreneurs mentioned that they do not have any other source of income. Now, this particular uh, webinar um, will be focusing largely on the positive side, right? Um, how businesses, um, you know, could potentially look into um, leveraging online strategies for them to survive through this time and even beyond. So on the panelists, um, I will not introduce them because I know that they would do much a much better job, but I will just name them and their companies and then they will then just uh, briefly tell us what their businesses do. So first up, we, we have Papama Mtrisha. Uh, she is the founder of Africa, Your Time Is Now. Uh, we have Dr. Theo Motufredo. She is the founder and the CEO of Us of Use of Skincare. I hope I'm mentioning that I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and then we also have Sinise Lojede, who is the group CEO of Blue Flamingo Digital. So maybe, ladies, if we can start with uh, yourself, Sinise, and you can just tell us a bit about what your business does. Sure. Thank you so much, Pearl. Um, I don't know if everybody can see me. All right, I, I can't seem to see myself. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. There's my dirty garage, everyone. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what we do now. Uh, it's really nice to, I guess, see all of you physically, not physically, but physically virtually. My name is Shanice Lajere. As Pearl said, I'm the group CEO of Blue Flamingo Digital. We are a Pan-African digital marketing and advertising agency. We're 11 years old in the market. And what we do is we basically take companies online and um, we count, very lucky to count amongst our clients, uh, telcos, banks, FMCG companies, uh, but also near and dear to my heart, a lot of SMEs and small businesses. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me and Blue Flamingo. Fantastic, thank you so much, Denise. Um, Dr. Theo, are you there? If you could just briefly tell us what your business does. Dr. Thea, are you there? All right, maybe let's move on to Papama um, and then we'll come back to Dr. Theo. Once she has sorted out her uh, sound, I think there's a bit of a challenge with the, 
with her uh, microphone. So Papama, if you could just briefly tell us about what Africa Your Time Is Now is all about. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as well as said, my name is Papama. I am a, a creative entrepreneur that operates in the fashion space. We founded um, the movement about almost three years ago, a few weeks shy of being three years ago. And the movement was birthed by a, a kiddies brand called Butter Pudding. And just very high level, the movement was, is all around, rally, it's a rally cry for Africans to realize the potential to step into their greatness. Whatever that is, it's appropriate for absolutely anyone across, across the board. Um, and we can talk more to it, uh, I think, as we get, as we get on. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Papama. Dr. Theo, are you there? Yes. Could you briefly tell us about your company, Uso Skincare? Good evening. Can you hear me now? Perfectly. Great. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Theo Motuafrendo. I'm the CEO and founder of Uso Skincare, which is an advanced uh, science-based skincare range. We formulated manufacture and retail here in South Africa, specifically for the skincare needs of Africans. Uh, we've been in the market for about two and a half years now and, um, and pre-COVID period, uh, our main retail channel was physically based uh, through the Agus Group. Um, uh, we were in, uh, we are in still uh, 40 stores across the country. And yeah, I'm, I'm quite um, I'm excited to share and learn from others on how we can um, uh, 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 move our business forward on the digital platforms. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Theo, um, for that uh, introduction on what your business does. Uh, maybe just as a, you know, just an opening, uh, you know, uh, question um, to any one of you ladies, if you could just uh, briefly share with us um, what your business looked like before COVID-19 versus during COVID-19. COVID I'm, I'm happy to start um, okay. as the continuation of my introduction. As I said, uh, we retailed our skincare range primarily uh, pre-COVID in Edgar stores, which is a, obviously a department store. I'm sure lots of people are familiar with it uh, across the country as well as the neighboring countries. And so now when uh, the lockdown period came and all retail stores were essentially forced to shut down, uh, we were then obviously faced with this huge challenge uh, that kind of like seemed like our business just falling apart into pieces where uh, our physical presence uh, has been closed. And in a market where um, typically in South Africa, the skincare market, only about five to 10% of it uh, pre-COVID was uh, um, e-commerce based. Uh, so we had to quickly um, 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 kind of like strategize and implement very quickly our move on to e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So that's how our, our business looked like before. Mm -hmm. All right, Sinise, do you wanna um, share uh, how your business was before COVID-19 versus during COVID-19? And then we'll move on to uh, Papama. Sure, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Uh, for Blue Flamingo, I think as a digital agency and probably most service businesses are experiencing this as well, there has been a little disruption in terms of the flow of communication in between teams and just organizing work to a remote working uh, model. But because we're in five African countries, remote work is very much something we have had to become accustomed to. So I would say that we we have had to pivot some of our things and I'll be explaining a few of those, but generally from a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I suppose we, we maybe count ourselves lucky in this instance that not a lot has changed about how we work, but we have seen a dramatic shift uh, in terms of decrease in budgets from our clients. So that has been where we have suffered greatly in terms of just clients saying, I don't think I can afford to pay what I used to pay. Um, yeah. And I'll explain a little bit more how we had to pivot and, one, and what we've had to do to be able to survive, but yeah. All right, Papama. Um, so for, for us, similarly to Sionis, we launched our business online. Uh, it was purely a budget thing. We didn't have the capital investment to launch on a, in a bricks and mortar store. So we launched online. And then I think two years into the business, we then started with bricks and mortar pop-up stores all over the world. And um, that's definitely obviously stopped now that we can't travel and we can't have bricks and mortar stores open. And uh, we literally just continued online. Uh, the only snag was just that obviously 
obviously we couldn't ship. I think for South Africans specifically, when we're at level five, uh, courier services, because we didn't fall under the essential services um, uh, uh, goods. So, and then as soon as we hit level four, then we could then ship the, the goods. But we've definitely seen a much, a very strong shift. Even though we've now opened up bricks and mortar stores, uh, people have stayed online. The online store has been extremely busy in the last few, um, in the last few weeks. Uh, tremendously busy, I think three, threefold. Uh, so yeah. that's quite interesting to watch. Um, yeah, but for online digital, that's, we've played in that space since we started as a business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with this whole uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown, not just an SA, just across the world, a lot of people have been saying that, well, now every business, you know, should think about how they should digitize um, the way in which they do business. Do you believe that this is, you know, this is actually what every single business should be looking at, um, you know, moving into the digital space? Um, you know, also just looking at, you know, at affordability as well, particularly for SMEs. Um, I think some SMEs are not quite clear as to, you know, what it means in terms of budget um, and things like that. So, you know, what are your thoughts, you know, around that? Like, is every business now suddenly supposed to be digital? Um, and what are the cost implications? What are some of the things that, you know, you have experienced in your moving to the digital space that you could potentially just share with, with other SMEs? Yeah, I think, I mean, previously, I think it was always a nice to have a nice addition to your core business, um, having a digital presence. But I think post-COVID, it's definitely not a, a, a nice to have. It's a, it's a, it's a necessity. Um, I think from a, a, a hygiene, from a convenience perspective, and also just from, yeah, convenience and ease, it's definitely proven to be the way to go. And also from a wider reach. That's the one thing that digital has always been able to afford us, to be able to reach um, a consumer that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to reach um, via a bricks and mortar store at any given time of the day across all the time zones. So I think over and above uh, it being a nice to have, it's definitely a necessity and there's definitely a shift uh, moving there. And I think even the, the reluctant consumer uh, who was not so keen to go online has definitely tested because of uh, force by force has definitely tested the convenience that digital um, has offered. And I think once you've tasted it, you can't untaste it. I think they'll probably stay. You'll be able to retain them. Sure. Uh, Dr. Theo, I, you know, uh, given what Papama just said, do you mm -hmm. see that this would potentially be the new normal? Everybody's talking about the new normal. What does the new normal look like to you? What, what do you think? Um, you know, next year will look like in terms of not just the industry that you're in, the skincare industry, but, you know, industries across board. Is that the new normal, digitizing everything? What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I, I completely agree that for any business to remain relevant uh, going forward, um, it, there has to be some digital aspect to it, yeah? Uh, some of our businesses obviously are in the retail sector, so that involves e-commerce. But for other businesses in, in the service uh, industry, um, um, communicating with clients uh, now and difficulty with customers face to face. So you have to find means and ways of uh, getting information uh, to your customers uh, using the various digital platforms. And there's so many of them. Um, you touched, um, 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 you asked earlier about in terms of the resource requirements, you know, um, an organization requires to, to move online. Um, yes, obviously you need, you need a website, um, you need um, uh, some, some, some form of digital marketing um, um, initiatives. Um, sometimes I should, yeah. But now we find that there's so many apps and, and so many platforms that are freely available or at least in an affordable rate that any business can actually be online but not yet. So I definitely believe that uh, going forward, uh, the world as we've known it before, the retail world in any sector um, has completely changed. Yeah. Um, how us as kind of like beauty consumers used to um, kind of like be more um, you want an uh, skin consultant for your makeup or your um, uh, skincare needs, that has completely changed now, yeah? And um, and, and now we are moving 
here we share Mesh has uh, provide skincare advice with customers online. Um, so definitely the world has changed, um, and um, and I think that's how we live. Sure. Um, Sinise, thank you for that, Doctor. Um, so Sinise, you know, you, you've been in the digital marketing space um, for a while. Do you perhaps think or foresee that, you know, everybody going online, um, you know, will, will probably saturate, um, you know, the, I suppose the, the markets online or whatever it is that is, you know, that is um, available online. Um, I mean, what are the consequences of having everybody online, essentially? Well, if you told me, educate me. <laughs> if you told me five years ago that we'd be having this conversation, I'd be over the moon. I'd be like, what? Everyone wants to go online? That's like, ah. But um, I suppose that, and I, and I, and I just want to say from our experience, and uh, you know, there's, there's what you call transitional behavior and what you call transformational behavior. So in the digital space, I have been responsible for having to convince a lot of my customers and my clients that digital is actually the way to go, right? So we've, we've had to educate and at the same time service our clients. So if you think about it right now, what we are is in is a transitional phase. We have no choice. We have to go online to get the essentials. And as Dr. Theo said, once you've, when, uh, sorry, actually it's Papama who said, see, I'm, I'm going to get slammed with a copyright suit now. Um, it, you know, it's, it's about making sure that um, you are there, but tasted the convenience of digital, it's very difficult to go back. And that's where the transformation begins to happen. I'll share a fun fact with you. For most okay. small to medium businesses, it takes six, nine to, I'll be, Let's, let's, let's go on the average, nine to 12 months to actually see a positive return from digital marketing efforts. Now, Whoa. that doesn't mean you're not going to see. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was muted there for a second. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to see any returns in those six to nine months or those nine to 12 months, but to really see a huge leap in your traffic and significance in terms of what you're doing, it does take about nine to 12 months. And I usually see clients start the journey with us. And then at the six month mark, they're like, nope, this is never gonna work, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Just when they're about to start reaping the benefits of all the awareness of all the push of people knowing that they're online, right? So we're gonna see that time shortened a little bit, but still remember a lot of people are still in adoption phase. A lot of people mm -hmm. are still um, going to want things to go back to normal. So I think it's about taking it with a, with, a, with, with a measured spoon. To your question about, is the market going to get saturated? Yes. Hands up, how many people are tired of webinars? Not this one, obviously, because this one Not is this one. <laughs> all kinds of awesome. But we're all kind of getting tired of being inundated with webinar requests. Most of us just, if it's a work one and you're mandated to be there, you know, you'll put it on, then you'll go make a cup of tea and watch Housewives <laughs> or whatever. Well, guys don't even know that you're not there. I mean, there's this guy who literally cut him, his, his face out and put it there and then it fell down, right? And people are like, oh, he wasn't even there. So there is going to be a little bit of fatigue. But mm. the thing is, if you can identify your primary audience, you can cut through the noise. If you can speak to your audience, if you can look for insights. So we do a lot of data research and analysis and listening. So we don't prescribe a one size fits all. So we tell you, what is your customer doing? What are they saying? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? And can you match them at their point of need? So there's going to be a lot of, I would say, co-creation for the, for the companies that are going to be successful. Don't imagine you know what your customers want. This is a fantastic opportunity to actually yeah. figure out what they want and be able to give it to them. So I think there will be saturation, but at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity to carve out a niche and be able to cut through the clutter because you are relevant, not being online for the sake of being online. Sure. So, you know, as you're speaking, I'm just thinking as an SME or maybe just as a startup, um, when you say digital marketing, outside of a, a website, because a lot of SMEs, especially at startup phase, what they're exposed to, what they, they understand to be part of digital marketing is have a website. What does it mean? What, what does digital marketing actually mean in, you know, in specifics, just so that SMEs understand what are we saying exactly when we say digital marketing? Is this updating Facebook pages? What is it exactly that, you know, th that you mean by digital marketing? Beautiful question. So I'll, I'll put it this way. We've got digital marketing, digital advertising, and then we've got digital transformation. Digital marketing is when you're online, you're selling yourself, um, you're creating content. I would put it that way, helpful content. So five ways to um, make sure you have skin as beautiful as Dr. Theo, 
right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and through that marketing, you inadvertently get people to buy your products, right? It's, it's proof first, it's helping people first. Seek first to understand before you're understood. Then there's advertising. You, you open your page, you see an ad from, you know, um, Papama's company and it's, it's selling you something. You're like, okay, I need that, I'll click. But it's direct advertising. Then there's transformation. Every aspect of your business uses digital marketing. You use analytics to see what your customers are saying. You use digital to communicate. You use channels like Slack internally with your team to be able to conduct your meetings. You use remote working. You don't all have to be face to face. You have a CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool. You have an ERP. So you've got all these, your, your business is literally digitized, right? So this is the difference. And, and, and de depending on where my customer is, I take them through various journeys of how they can move from one stage to another. Because just like running a business, you don't want to go to digital transformation when you haven't even figured out how to run your Facebook page or what the point is of even having a Facebook page in the first place. So that's kind of how it explain, explain the difference. And I would say that it does take patience, but the number one advice I can give is just get somebody who knows what they're doing to help you out. Because it's just like buying a cheap pair of shoes. It gets very painful in the end. Yeah. All right. Um, Papama and Dr. Theo, um, when it comes to digital marketing, what is it exactly that, um, you know, you guys, you know, specifically um, implemented within your businesses? Uh, was it SEO management? You know, what is it exactly that helped you guys, you know, bring your, your brand to the fore and, you know, gain the clients that you guys have gained? Mm -hmm. um, so for us, I, we started with the education element. So exactly step-by-step step, as Denise has actually just painted the picture. It's exactly what we followed. Uh, we started with the education. We launched um, the brand so, uh, solely on social media, Instagram specifically. And that was purely because I am only on Instagram and nothing and no other platform. It's the only platform that I knew. And uh, we educated um, our potential consumers or our target market on what we're about. And to your point, we were extremely very patient. It wasn't about making money on social media. It was literally just educating, telling people and our audience what we're about, what we stand for, and, uh, and building that um, profile in a very meticulous and very authentic way. Authentic being the operative word. And then um, the next step was then to um, attend and educate ourselves um, seminars on what things like Facebook, Instagram shopping, and all of those things to support what we had done as a foundation in order mm -hmm. to transact so that we also sell that convenience for people. We also found that a lot of our consumers were living on social, on, 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 on um, digitally so yeah. how do we then make it easier for them so they don't have to pick up a call a phone to find out oh we've seen this on instagram how do we then buy this thing so how did we marry those two platforms that was the next step and um yeah so we literally just have married all the from social media to our website making sure that it, it, the photography makes sense it's as mm. clear as possible so that we minimize people call, having to finding the need to to call and ask different questions, making sure that our returns policy is very seamless. That was very key um, and very flexible because people needed to have the trust. We need to earn their trust. Um, mm. And then proving ourselves. So if we say we deliver in 24 hours, we deliver in 24 hours. Just always mm. going beyond the call of duty in making yeah. sure that we, we surpass expectations. And that's how we built the business, literally. Very, very... Um, minimally and uh not a big budget but yeah. very authentically and very all right patient. fantastic before we go to you dr theo um i just wanted to remind everybody that's joining us that you guys can go to the q and a um icon just at the bottom of the screen and you can ask your questions over there um feel free to also just make comments you don't have to have a question you can make comments um, etc. So, Dr. Theo, back to you. Um, strategies that you have implemented um, in your business. Um, so, when we launched our business two and a half years ago, we, we had a digital uh, uh, presence. Um, so, in terms of brand awareness, uh, we uh, through social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, 
Uh, we yeah. recently just started becoming active on Twitter. And uh, we found that, um, you know, that, that has really brought us a lot of return versus what we have invested um, versus the amount of resources that went to it as well as, you know, for the cash investment. Uh, but now we have seen that now that our customers know that um, they cannot reach us in stores, like in Edgar's store, that they could before talk to a skin consultant, we've had to like open up many other channels for people to reach us to seek advice on, um, you know, their specific skin concerns or which products they are correct for them. So we have implemented several things. So we have implemented on our website um, a chat box um, where people can actually uh, come and ask us questions. Most of the day we are live. If we're not, we'll email the answers and recommendations. Uh, we have become more committed um, in um, kind of like uh, answering um, what the market is asking, um, sort of like um, um, providing information that's very based, uh, providing uh, solutions, not just advertising, you know, uh, providing mm -hmm. solutions for our customers. So we do that through um, 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 email marketing. So we do quite yeah. a lot of that and we've had a great response from that. And we've only been able to implement that because we were actually quite um, dedicated from the beginning, two, year, two and a half years ago, in collecting information from our customers um, as in contact information obviously with their uh, permission um, and um, and now we are able to keep in touch with them um, we get like great feedback on in terms of the email marketing which is not advertising based it's actually more of how can we offer solutions how can we help you through this very difficult time um, that everyone is going through um, that could actually have an adverse impact on your skin um, because of all the stress and and, and everything that everyone's going through. Um, and um, the last um, kind of like platform that actually has really worked quite well that we've used in the past few weeks is WhatsApp marketing. Um, and we're actually oh. looking forward to engaging a, a specialist digital marketer who can help us amplify that. Um, yeah, so that's something I guess, you know, everyone is on WhatsApp all day. Um, so yeah, we've, we've seen that working quite well for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. So there's a brilliant question that just came through from uh, Katrian Krobler. I um, hope I'm pronouncing your surname uh, correctly. So she says, uh, do you think that democratization of data or internet is required more before we see the real shift? Um, and she says, not all have data to shop advertising. Yes, but shopping and delivery costs. So, okay, maybe let's just answer the first part of her question. Do we think that democratization of data or internet is required more before we see a real significant um, shift? Oh, definitely. I think that will make a huge difference because people will then have access to be able to go online um, as much as the middle class can afford, but the majority of our population, it's, it, it's, not, a, it's not an easy thing for them to to, 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 to acquire. So definitely um, making data affordable, more accessible, will definitely, we'll see a spike in the online sales. I don't doubt that for, for one minute. Sinise, do you agree? I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that's, that, that's absolutely right. I think that we're getting slowly to the point where, just like water and air, data is going to become a human right especially mm. if you think about the fact that without access to data certain things will not you will not be able to access them or enjoy them yeah. um, and i think once we see that democratization you definitely will see an explosion I'll tell you a funny story we're in five african markets and a lot of our work in uganda and rwanda some of the research we did the youth would rather not have a meal a day but they'll use that money to buy internet so they can stay connected because of social status, because if you're not online, then you, you might as well not exist. Um, because to not have data is like, oh, you know, it's, it's a form of you belong. And we all know that status is a key driver for people, right? So it's very interesting when you ask that question. And I think we must start to ask the question, how do we make it more? I mean, let's, let's talk about education. So many children were shut out of the education system overnight because their parents can't afford the internet. We're all crying here about how we're seeing flames educating our children, but we have access to data and internet and the ability to take our kids through class. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other section of the country that can't do that. So I think democratization of data and internet is going to become a more, um, you know, it has been a, a conversation in the past, but I think it's gonna take on even more urgency as we go forward and that will see an explosion 
And, and you know, I think Dr. Theo and Papama mentioned something that I found very interesting. You see, opportunity isn't about you're smarter you, you, you're than anybody. It's about being able to put things in place such that you can make the most of whatever happens. And I think you're now seeing the companies that were digitizing, even when it didn't really seem like necessary, you know, yeah. it wasn't do or die, but look at the difference in them being able to now take advantage of what that is. Papama's story is amazing. She didn't have the money then, but now it's like, wow, thank God we went through all the learnings and we yeah. now know um, how to, to continue taking advantage of the digital space. So even if you have never started, just start now, because the, the truth is you're not going to be perfect in the first couple of months, even in the first couple of years. But the more you do it, the better you will get at it, the better advisors you'll get, the, you'll start to see the return. So it's about taking that first step. And, and you know, and, and that's what, you know, what will help you. And if I may just ask the participants, if you can just drop in the comment section, if you've ever tried to run a Facebook, Instagram, or any kind of social media ad, I, I just want to see what that is and tell me if you had a good experience or a bad experience. So yes, I've run face, digital ads before, had a great experience or no, never tried. Just so we can have a fun little, um, it's exam time people, we can have a fun little at the end of this to see just what the temperature is. Denise, I probably should be the first one with my hand up because I have. Great. What was your experience? <laughs> um, my experience is I got a lot of likes and I'm not even sure who like 80% of those people were. Right. But you got some results. Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just get to uh, another question here. Um, so I'm just going to go through these questions. Just give me two seconds. Um, there's a, a question from uh, Sibongile uh, R. Uh, she says that I have been in business for five years and I struggle with communicating my vision to digital marketers. Um, every time I hire somebody, it's always a mess in terms of the strategy. Uh, I feel like, I feel like they Who are you hiring, me. girl? Who are you hiring? She's obviously not hiring you, Sinise. Um, <laughs> so, and then she says, I feel like they impose their ideas on me a lot. Um, are there any tips on choosing the right digital marketer to work with? Maybe let, let's not allow Sinise to answer that as one in the digital marketing space. <laughs> let's ask the two ladies who are not in that space, what are the tips in choosing the right uh, digital marketer? Um, I'll go first. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm giggling because that's, that, that's been such a huge challenge. I, I completely identify with, I think it's Wangile who asked the question, um, in, in that... Um, you know, it, it can be quite difficult finding the right digital partner. Um, and, and I have struggled for the past two and a half years. Um, some wins, yeah, in areas where we have no capability of. I think there's areas such as search engine optimization and Google Ads that actually need um, kind of like specific skills. But I think as a small business, there's certain things um, that within your small team, um, you guys can start, you can start learning. Um, there's lots of... Uh, training available freely from Facebook and Instagram um, and most importantly um, you know is, is, is the onus is on us as business owners to know our customer uh, to understand exactly what our customers key problems are and to actually offer value to the customer and um, and, and I think with this this era for me presents an opportunity for everyone to kind of like try, you have to try something. Yeah. We've never been faced with this kind of situation before and all you can do is try. So try doing it. If you're not happy with an agency, which is what I did now during COVID time, I wasn't happy with the outcomes I was getting with certain aspects of digital marketing. And I took it into my own hands and I actually did some courses and I'm actually happy. And now that I understand how things work on the other side i think i'm better able to explain to an agency that okay so this is what i have learned this is what i know our customer is and what our offering is and um can you help me to 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 to, to put it in the language and the you know the you know put in the efficiencies that you can bring into my organization so um what i can say is that this is the right time to try yeah, um, it's uncertain time. No one knows what's going on. No one is uncertain of what's going to happen in the future. So just give it a go mm -hmm. yourself first. Mm -hmm. 
All right, fantastic. Uh, Papama, what, what should I look out for? What, what do I need to look out for in order for me to choose, um, you know, the best or the, the most fitting uh, digital marketer? Do you have any tips that are um, maybe in addition to what Dr. Theo had already mentioned? No, no, just literally just echoing what she was saying. Just knowing yourself and your business to the core so that by the time you, you meet a potential partner, like any relationship in life, you need to know yourself first so that you're not dictated to. You, only you'll know your customers best. And you'll yeah. know what the limitations of your business is. Your business are, mm. is. So um, I think just knowing yourself is dedicating that time and then go out there and look for someone and you'll know. You'll know from the language, the energy, the fit, if, if the fit is good. So I think first just know, understand who you are and don't rely on your uh, potential partner to be telling you what's cooking, what's in, what's hot, what's not. You know, you need to know yourself first and then go out there and, and, um, and for, out for tender. All right, fantastic. Sinise, there's a mm. question for you uh, from Patricia Chambers-Lamini. So uh, she asked, when establishing an online presence for your business on social media platforms, um, how do these align with your personal profile? Wow, that's a great question. So you've probably seen people like Richard Branson online. You've seen um, people who are really the face of their business. Elon Musk, for better or for worse. Uh, Papama herself, I'm sure she's also kind of a face for the business. It, I, I really like what Dr. Theo said it's a, and what Papama said so eloquently. It's about knowing yourself. If you know you naturally love to be on social media, you love to be out there, you love to talk to people about your product, you're excited about it then by all means, you would make a great ambassador. But like I say, if you have a face for radio, like some of us, <laughs> uh, then you don't want to be a TV presenter, is all I'm saying, right? Okay. So yeah. It's also about knowing your, you know how in a company there are certain people with strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people don't know this, but Coca-Cola's Facebook page was started by a fan. It wasn't even started by Coke. A fan mm -hmm. went online, he loved Coke so much, he started, and you know what they did? They hired him. They said, you know oh, what? Wow. Yeah, they did. And that was smart because he had actually managed to get a lot of attention for Coke. He had this organic way of expressing the brand, right? He had, and nobody could replicate that. So mm -hmm. I think what you have to do when you're running a personal brand and a business brand is ask yourself, is the business going to benefit from you also becoming part of the marketing strategy or is mm -hmm. it not going to benefit? In which case, you know, it's, diff it's different strokes for different folks. What I say is what, what works for one doesn't have to work for the other. So again, know yourself, know what your strengths are, what you're good at. If your personal energy you feel is something that can help sell the business, by all means, go for it. Because again, the other thing about digital media and social is consistency. You can't start a vlog today and then tomorrow you disappear off the face of the earth. It means we can't mm -hmm. trust you especially if we like your content and we want more of it. So remember, it's hard work to keep, you know, those profiles going. So that would be my advice. All right, fantastic. I hope that does answer your questions, Patricia. So eloquently put, Denise. Um, so there's a question here from Anonymous, uh, firstly, who says, thank you to the panelists for sharing the experiences so authentically. Um, you ladies are doing a great job. Uh, the question is, even if you do see the opportunity, the risk of cyber crime can threaten one success. Which payment platforms have you used to collect the cash safely? And what do you think is still missing in the SA uh, payment system, payment processing market to help um, SMEs? Do you want to uh, take the pay, line, Papa? Yeah, pay for, the, well, we've got PayPal and PayFast. PayFast being the uniquely South African um, alternative. Uh, so okay. if your on, online store is, uh, am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, if your okay, online yeah, store yeah. services the international market, I would definitely suggest PayPal because it's just widely used and it's better trusted and very secure. And then for South Africa, uh, the South African market, PayPal is also just as reliable. The only thing is that it's limited within our borders. So, and we've been using PayFast uh, and PayPal uh, since we started and we've never had a problem, touch wood. Mm. So I, I think, um, yeah, I think people... 
we haven't had any issues. We haven't had any issues at all. I think over and above the payment system, it's about how you conduct the online store as well. So it's, it's, there's a lot of things that come to play and that um, you have to factor in when it comes to building trust with your consumer. Um, the payment one is, is just one of them. Mm. Um, just to add on to what Papa is saying very quickly before Dr. Theo jumps in, it's also about the security yeah, sure. of your site. Because I think a lot of people, you know, payment gateways, they've been through this. And, and like Papama said, they've really enhanced the security. Um, it's also about your site. I mean, we are a digital agency. We've had our site hacked like three times. Uh, and, and, and it's not that we didn't have the protocols in place. We did. And we had to keep you know, checking them out. But it's also making sure that your website itself is built on a very strong platform and has the right security measures in place. Mm. Oh, well, fantastic. Dr. Theo. Um, Yes, I, I think I think um, as much as I, I I did say that there are a lot of, of the digital marketing things that one as an as an organization can do um, ourselves, but cyber security is I, I would say that is not one of them. Uh, I think this is where you actually need experts to ensure that your site is secure and it's constantly monitored. Um, uh, you know by a reputable agency that it's, it's, it's actually secure because that is a key thing, um, trusting between a, um, um, a brand and a consumer. Um, the customer must trust that when they pay either by EFT or PayFast so or PayPal or um, cash send, uh, that their money is actually going to a reputable company that actually exists. Mm -hmm. And also <laughs> you have to deliver, um, yes, um, that actually exists. And also you have to also then make sure that you keep to your promises. If you're saying you're going to deliver within three to five days, make sure that you deliver three to five days and you keep the customer um, you know, um, informed about where in the process they are. Mm -hmm. And also um, I, I think what's also quite important is providing um, on your social media pages some kind of social proof um, real people actually saying that um, showing and saying I ordered I purchased and I received um, mm. I think that's quite an important element of kind of like of closing that uh, trust um, circle in, 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 in e-commerce mm -hmm. all right perfect um, just before I continue with the questions that are coming in um, that are flooding in actually uh, people are really enjoying the information that you ladies are sharing um, I just wanted to go back a bit before I, uh, you know, I forget. Uh, Sinise, you had mentioned that you would share with us how you had been able to pivot um, your model, your business model. What are some of the things that you have implemented in your business to make sure that you, you know, you survive um, past this, you know, this whole COVID-19 mess? <laughs> True. Indeed, it is a mess, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> but there's a message in the mess. And I think the message for me is collaboration. And that's why we have webinars like this. I, I made a joke about webinars being tiring, but honestly, they are useful. And that's where you get to meet people and connect. And actually, it's enabling connections all over the world. So don't lose that. Um, I know it, one of the things we implement, implemented very quickly was a rhythm. You have to have a rhythm. People are looking to you for answers. Even if you don't know what you're going to say in that nine o'clock meeting, have a placeholder for it. So because people are we're creatures of habit. So when you take mm. us out of our, our comfort zones and throw us into God knows what, it's like, oh God, what do I hang on to now? And people start mm. making all sorts of plans and things start falling by the wayside. So the first mm. thing we did is to establish um, a rhythm. We said, okay, mm. we're going to meet every other day. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 30 mm. minutes to check in on people. How are they doing? Is anyone in your family sick? So it couldn't be business as usual. We've had to start with the soft stuff and then go into, okay, where is this? Which client is doing what, et cetera. I'm going mm. to say that there is absolutely no substitute for systems and processes. Very early on in our business, we implemented, and, and I guess it's easy for us because we're a technology company, but we already implemented things like having file storage. I'm amazed at how many companies don't have a system for how they store their files, customer files, your own personal files. And all this is part of digitization, right? Making sure that um, communication, how you communicate is documented. When someone joins your company, they shouldn't have to guess. Uh, when someone joins our company, I've created a video that I share with everybody that tells them why the business started, what our ethos is, etc. So I don't have to keep having that meeting or that conversation. Digital enables that, right? So people know your why, what you stand for. Um, so I think the, for specifically in regards to COVID, we reached out to all of our clients the very first week when everything started. We called every single client and said, hey, what are you thinking? And it was hard because we just didn't want to hear the no's. We were so terrified. They're going to tell us, you know what, your budget has been slashed by 80%. Mm. 
But we had to get ahead of that. Because if you don't do that, your client is going to make plans without you. Now, how do you do that if you're in B2C or you can't call every single customer? You use the internet. You put out communication. You send an email because you have all their emails, right? You send an email and say, we know you're worried. What are the questions? What are you asking? How can we help? So that's the first thing we did. So rhythm, internal communications, external communications with clients. We just talked to everybody. The other thing we did that I find that I, I, is very helpful for me to share with people is we documented our process. And I'm happy to share that with anyone who wants it. It's a 15 page document that shows everything we did from March 15th, which is when COVID really hit to now. From town hall meetings, we, we literally documented everything we did from process to process. This is what we did in Rwanda. This is how we, we managed lockdown. This is what we did in order to communicate. These are the tools we used. So it's literally something that we will then eventually, you know, when we're old and gray, look back and say, remember that time? This is actually how we managed to make it through that time. But then it also becomes a playbook for anybody else who needs it because it's about being useful and it's about being helpful. Um, so yeah, I hope that that helps. Yeah, that, that helps a lot. Thank you very much. So uh, we only have 10 minutes uh, left. I see there's still some questions um, coming through. Uh, so we're going to try and marathon through those. Um, so I'm just going to ask a question that was asked twice by Zipporah Maubane. Apologies about that. I see that you've asked it twice. Um, so she says that to anyone on the panel, so this goes to any one of you ladies, um, although it takes time to reap the rewards of digital marketing, I have found that analytics in the early stages of a digital uh, transformation are useful, uh, a useful insight for many brands. What has your experience been? Anyone wants to take that? Yeah, it, it can yeah, to I, I can go. Yeah, sure. Um, for our for our organization, um, you know, I, I think kind of like data um, analytics is helpful in us. Um, in, in, in helping us target as precisely as we can um, our market. Um, it enables to know who's buying our products, where they are, how old are they, what kind of um, lifestyle do they li live, and that obviously then leads to um, um, us trying to, to, to answer questions like, what kind of information do they want to receive from brands like us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so for, for us, um, the kind of data and analytics has helped us uh, or help us uh, inform us on, on, on kind of like the messaging that we um, 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 put out to the market about our brand. Mm -hmm. All right, fantastic. Does any one of you ladies want to just quickly go through that same question? If, it is, if you have anything in addition to what the, uh, Dr. Theo has already mentioned. I mean, I can be super vulnerable for a second if you want. And I can even be... Um, I can actually go into sharing what our dashboard looks like, if that's helpful. Because um, I think the thing is sometimes you come to these webinars and you're like, I actually need to see what you're talking about, right? Okay. Um, and if you look at the screen right now, this is me being super vulnerable, but da data is the lifeblood of any digital business or any business that goes online. So you can see from email marketing here, you can see the number of subscribers we have and how that grows over time. I can see from February to March, I've actually lost subscribers. Why are people opting out of my email marketing? Is the data not helpful? And then in April, I had a leap of almost 100, 200 people, right? So we need to interrogate the data and look at what that means. If I look at my organic search impressions, you know, I go from 3,000 to 700. There's paid search. You need to be able to track what is your cost for every lead that comes to you. How much are you spending on it? right? Mm -hmm. Your SEO, you need to know when someone lands on your website, where are they going first and why? If they are landing on your website and staying there for two seconds and they're out, there's a problem with your site. It's not helpful. Maybe the information is not great. And you need to be able to track the data. So this is just what we do on a monthly basis. And we do this for our clients as well, where you can actually look at social media, the followership, how is it growing? You look at the engagement. Um, and, and it's really uh, the, the, the metrics and the data. And the reason I shared that is because a lot of marketers talk about this stuff, but they don't show you how to do it. And the how to is actually where the value exists. That's mm. where you're able to say, let me track how much money I'm spending and if it's actually coming back to me. And if you decide to give it a period of time, then you're able to say, okay, I've done this for six months and I've only gotten so much. Or mm. when I post this kind of content, I really, really get a reaction. So let me post more of that. But how are you going to know what's working and what's not if you're not looking at the data? So I think mm. analytics is a huge part of 
of, of um, driving return on investment, I saw a question about return on investment. And you might want to interrogate that the reason why your return on investment wasn't great is patience, not enough knowledge on the digital space, and actually not looking at the metrics and also mm. counting the wrong metrics. There's no mm. point in saying I have a million fans if none of them engages with your, with your product or buys your product, right? Mm -hmm. So it's also which yeah. kind of metrics you're tracking. Fantastic. So we only have five minutes left. Um, perhaps maybe if I could request that um, anyone that still has any questions for the panelists, uh, maybe if you could visit the, the Boasa uh, social media pages uh, and maybe perhaps you'd be able to, um, you know, get responses there from each one of the panelists. Or alternatively, if any of them, you know, have, you know, specific pages that they would want uh, you to write them to, they could just type it up in the chat uh, mm -hmm. section of this um, of this webinar. So I'm just going to ask one more question, which comes from Sichaba Motsia Loa. Um, and this one goes to Papama. Uh, the question is, what inspired Butter Pudding in Africa? Your time is now. And how has branding enabled your business online? Uh, in thank you minute. for that question, Sichaba. It's such a convoluted question. I can't, there's no way I'll answer it in one minute. But I think it was literally <laughs> just to make a difference. I, I studied design and I studied design and then I went into a media. I went in fashion media specifically. But then I, I always knew that I had unfinished business with creating beautiful things. But I knew that when I go... Mm -hmm. Back to design stuff, there needed to be a little bit more substance from the, from the inside out. So that's how um, Butter Pudding was, was, uh, was birthed. And then the African Time is Now movement was all about inspiring myself and my neighbor and um, anyone else who the message resonated with. I thought, I felt personally that the message was the truth. Um, the African time is now, it is our time. And it's time that we recognize it as opposed to being told that it's our time and then uh, step into our greatness. And that's essentially what it, it is in a minute. That was such an unfair question to answer in one minute. I'll add. <laughs> I'm so sorry, we're running out of time. That is expensive. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Um, can I just please allow Dr. Theo and Sinesh just to um, give us uh, their last words. What can you just close it up you know um any with with advice of course um that is aligned with today's uh, discussion we literally have two minutes so i am going to be fair yeah. on papam and give one uh, give you ladies one minute each as well yeah yeah i, I think i'll uh, i'll <clears throat> tag along on papama's uh, uh, um, uh tagline of africa your time is now i i think there really hasn't never been a better time for for us as local brands small uh local businesses to really grow um, um with borders closed um this is our time it's our time to um to create it's our time to drive it's our time to introduce to market products that are specifically um made for us by us right here in south africa and um and uh and i think really two two pieces of advice from me um things that i think have really worked is kind of like the power of our collective intelligence as an no one, no man is an island. Everyone needs input. Mm -hmm. And you should not be shy to reach out to the next person, to the next business owner, uh, to seek advice um, on how they've been successful in a specific um, area uh, that you're looking at. And uh, secondly, is that you just have to try. Um, you really just have to try doing things differently, try using different platforms, uh, try introducing different content, I try doing things differently because um, this is the best time to try anything new. Mm -hmm. All right, fantastic. Sinise. I have 30 seconds. So I'm just going to say <laughs> I have to sip my own Kool-Aid. Um, I'm going to put a link in the, I'm going to put a link in the um, chat. So a lot of what we've done in order to, wait, sorry. A lot, a lot of what we've done in order to, I'm sorry, sorry guys, you know, kids just, Bless a lot, and it's always when you're just about to end right? it was going so well up until this point um, so basically what we've done for covid is is we've really um tried to give as much advice as we can right to open it up because i think that's what we can we're all in it together so i'm happy to give free 30 minute consults to anybody who wants it where we can just deep dive into your why want you to use digital etc because i just i'm so passionate about digital and i cannot exhaust it all on one webinar 
So the link is right there. It's a link to my calendar. Uh, feel free to book a session and I'm happy to do that. And like Dr. Theo said, it all starts with just wanting to know more and curiosity. Everything, remember this one thing that Steve Jobs said that is not often quoted. Everything that you admire, that you look around that's amazing, was created by people who are no smarter than you. And that's just yeah. the truth. They just had systems and processes and, and, and consulted widely on how to, to be successful. <laughs> all right, fantastic. Um, all right, so we're going to cut it short um, right here uh, and, you know, and just close up the session. Uh, thank you very much to all those that have attended um, this beautiful and very informative uh, webinar. Um, again, for those that would like to uh, send in questions, uh, to Boasa, you can email gauteng at boasa.co.za. I will spell that. It's gauteng at bwasa.co.za. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Papama, um, Sinise, as well as Dr. Theo and everybody that has made it. Um, we will make, um, you know, provision for, you know, for Q&As, for questions, just for five more minutes, but we are officially closing um, this webinar right now. Um, and thank you for those that would like to be released and go and spend time with their families, they may do so. For those that would like to continue asking questions, please do so, you can do so right now on the social media platforms. Um, again, this hashtag that we are using is business women persevere. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thanks everyone, it was lovely to have you. Hi. Okay, I am here now. <laughs>